Let's see who they are. Great. The Tabernacles of Edom. Number one on the list. Tabernacles of Edom. That's today your neighborhood white man. That's what they teach. No? Yes or no? They don't teach the laws done away? Yeah, they do. Well, I haven't been there. I don't go to church. You haven't been to church? That's a good thing. No, I don't go to church. This is the best church you're going to be at today. So they teach the laws done away with, correct? Okay. The laws done away with was not tithing a law. So if the law is done away with, why are you collecting tithing? I got a question. Okay, come forward. Malachi and then Deuteronomy 14. My friend said you gotta pay. When she goes to church, she said she gotta give money to the church, but they didn't help her when she needed it. So she believes in the tithing. I told her, why are you giving the money? Alright, before we even go to tithing, give me the book of Acts. Because you said she went for help and they refused to help her. Yeah. Now, they are tithing and there's free will offering. Okay. okay? Free will offering. Is what you choose to give when you want to give it. Like the lady gave what two pence, and that's what that's all she had. And the other people give surplus, what the extra they had, leftovers. So there was no percentage on the free will offering. But tithing is a whole different ballgame. We're gonna get to tithing, but let me show you what we're supposed to be doing with the free will offering. The book of Acts. The book of Acts, chapter four, verse thirty-four. Neither was there any start, start on top. 32. Verse 32. And the multitude of them that believed. And the multitude of them that believed, read. Were of one heart. They were of one heart. What is the heart of men? Huh? I don't know if I understand the question. What is the heart of men? They were of one heart. So that means they were just hugging each other, everybody like, come here, hugging, we have one heart. This is not your heart. This is just an organ that pumps blood. They think the same. That's it. Your brain is your heart. Right. When it says they were of one heart, that means they agree as one on everything that this Bible teaches. That's why I say them that believed. Because to be in one accord, we must believe in the same thing. This is why the one million men march never worked. Here's the thing, you bring one million men together, 10,000 is gangsters, 10,000 is uh, Muslim, 10,000 Christian, once they finish partying, everybody went their own separate ways. What did you achieve? You just had a big black party at the White House, on the lawn of the White House. That's it. Nothing changed. How long they been marching? We shall overcome. Have we overcame? We. The book of Acts, chapter 4, verse 32. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart uh -huh. and of one soul. Read. Neither said any of them that ought of the things which he possessed was his own. So there was no selfish people. What I had was not my own. Because if I have two houses, two houses and you just lost your job, you just lost your apartment. Well, with us, you wouldn't even lose your apartment. But worst case scenario, you didn't talk about it. We didn't know about it until you lose your house. You, I, you're supposed to be my sister. I'm supposed to tell you, hey, I see you in the church, but I'm hungry. Hey, pray, Jesus is gonna feed you. You've been giving money to the church for 25 years. Then one month, you cannot make your mortgage. You're gonna lose your house? Does that make sense? Somebody's been robbing you. Read. Neither said any of them that ought of the things which he possessed was his own. Uh -huh. But 
They had all things common. They had all things common. And with great power gave the apostles witness. Give me the other one in Acts. You read two or four? You read chapter two? I'm at verse four. I mean chapter four. Go give me chapter two. The book of Acts, chapter two, verse forty-two. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, in fellowship, and in breaking of bread, and in prayers. And after came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs, and were done by the apostles. Read. And all that believed. There we go again. All that believed. You see a key word that keeps saying? All that believed. Because Christianity will tell you, open a soup kitchen and feed everybody. The Bible does not tell you to do that. All that believed, read, were together uh -huh. and had all things common, read, and sold their possessions. So they sold certain things they have, not everything. If I have five houses, do I need five houses? No. Read. And goods imparted them to all men, and every man had need. Read it right, bro. Verse 45, and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. So they took the money and distributed according to the need each person had. So if you were a woman, single mother, you had five kids, and you were a single mother with one kid, you're not going to get the same amount that she gets because she have more mouths to feed. That's what you're supposed to be doing with the money. It's money that you're supposed to pay bills with, such as electricity, basically maintain the building, and then stack up the rest of the money for when people are in need. Not for the pastor to buy a Benz, to send his kids to Harvard. Meanwhile, you paying every, every week you give him money, but your kids can't even go to college. Does that make sense? To show you how people are confused, they still stay in those churches. Now let's go to tithing. Give me Malachi. Because this scripture right here, I call it robbery without a gun. Because that's the scripture. Pastor is using your emotion to rob you. You know, he, he gets you scared. And have you coming out your pocket like, Oh Lord, I don't want Jesus to be mad at me. No, the pastor is going to be mad at you if you don't pay. Send your bill to your house. Things like that make the news. You haven't paid tithe in five months. Here's your bill with interest. What the? Read that. The book of Malachi, chapter 3, verse 8. Will a man rob God? Will a man rob God? Brothers and sisters. And then the organ is... And the people start pass, I mean, walking around. Read. Yet ye have robbed me. You have robbed God? How? Read, my brother. But ye said, Wherein have we robbed thee? Uh huh. In tithes and offerings. See, my brothers and sisters, when you don't give your tithe and offering, you rob God. Can I get a aim? <laughs> and then now you start feeling guilty, like, damn, you know, I've been giving the pastor nothing for weeks, and I've been eating good. I don't want Jesus to, you know, curse me. Let, 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 let me give the pastor something. And then from there, he stopped. He don't read, though. No, you know, some pastor read any, some further. Then he go, if you plant a $1,000 seed, $500 seed, I need 10 people to plant a $1,000 seed. Like, you're already dictating how much money people should be giving you. And you still don't see that's a pep, pep in you? Read. Verse 9. Ye are cursed with a curse. See, if you don't pay God, you're going to be cursed. So now you get tight like, oh, Lord, I don't want to be cursed. Let me give the pastor a $1,000 seed. Because you already put it in your head. He need 10 people to give a $1,000 seed. What he was doing, you don't realize, he already mapped out how much money he needs to come up to buy the new bins. If 10 people give a $1,000, another 10, 300, another 10, 500, oops, yep, that's my money right there. Three. For ye have robbed me, uh -huh. even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. Stop. So when you cultivate the land, don't you need a storehouse to do what? To store the crops? You with me so far? Pay attention. Read. That there may be meat in mine house. Bring ye all the tithes in the storehouse so there can be meat. Meat, food. So if you
you bring the tithe and you store it in the storehouse, then my house will have food. Read. And prove me now herewith. Stop for a second. Um, at the time that we used to bring tithe, tithing, we had what? The Levitical priesthood. Their sole purpose, their sole job was to minister to the children of Israel. Therefore, we had to feed them. We're going to get to it deeper in the scripture. We have to feed them. Now, do we have a Levitical priesthood today? So why the hell Pastor Porkchop just came out of jail, opened up a church, bring ye the tithes? The pastor realized, hey, I got I to gotta hustle. Selling crack cocaine is going to get me 20 years. Pimping, it didn't work. But if I'm the pastor, I could pimp everybody and make enough money to buy me some coke and some prostitute in the same time. And better yet, I get to counsel your wife. Brother, uh, wait for me outside. Uh, your wife came for counseling. Uh, you could go sit out there. Give me about two hours. I'm going to counsel your wife. She come out happy. She listened to everything pastor says, but not our Lord, not our husband. Getting that good counseling from pastor, all right. Read. Save the Lord of hosts. Save the Lord of hosts. Read. If I will not open you the windows of heaven. So if you bring your tithing, God is going to open the windows of heaven. Here's a question for you. What happened when God opened the windows of heaven in the days of Noah? No, but what happened? The windows of heaven was open. What happened? It rained. Because if you bring the food in the storehouse, he's going to bless you with rain. Why? But Pastor Porchard tells you prosperity. You give 10%, believe in God, he's going to give you $1,000 back. But hold up. My own mama's been waiting for that money for the longest. She's close to be 80 years old. Where's the prosperity? The only person that prosper in the church is the pastor and the deacons and the deaconesses, those who are in the take. And the accountant wearing all them alligator shoes, all white suits. You follow? Read. If I will not open you the windows of heaven. So the first blessing is going to be rain. Read. And pour you out a blessing. That there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer. Stop. The next blessing is. So now, the second blessing. Read the second blessing. The first blessing, if you pay your tithe, is going to be rain. The second blessing is what? Verse 11. And I will rebuke the devourer. He will rebuke the devourer. What is the devourer? When we talk about food, rain, so what devours crops? Huh? Caterpillars, all those things, locusts. So Mosa said, if you get, bring your tithe to the storehouse, I'm going to do two things for you. Being that you're feeding my priest, I'm going to make sure it rain, because without rain, you cannot get good cultivation. Without, well, not only that, even if you get rain, if there's too much locust, it's going to eat the crop. So those are the two blessings, right? Now let's go to the law of tithing. Deuteronomy. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 14, verse 22. Uh -huh. Thou shalt truly tithe all the increase. You see, the pastor will close the Bible right there. Even though he don't believe in the Old Testament, but he'll go there to prove his point and tell you, I ah, don't worry about the Old Testament. We only in the New, new Covenant. Don't worry about the Old. That's another lie. So it said, that's how truly tithe. So as a people, we were supposed to tithe. Wait. Of, of the increase of thy seed. Of the increase of what? Of the increase of thy seed. No, give the pastor money. The increase of thy seed. So a thousand dollar seed. See how he flips it on you? So when you read that seed, you, you think, oh, money. No, of the increase of thy seed. Read. That the field. That what? That the field. That what? That the field. That the field. Breaketh forth year by year. 
That means every year you plant, there's a time that you record, and when you record, you take a percentage and bring it to the priest. It's going to go into it. Let's go further. Read. Verse 23. And thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God. What you should do when you bring the tithe. And thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God. No, give the pastor a thousand dollars. And thou shalt eat before the Lord. You are supposed to eat when you bring the tithe. And it's going to sum it up together. Don't worry. Step by step. Just bear with me. Read. Thy God in the place which he shall choose uh -huh. to, to place his name there. So the place that he chose to put his name there was Jerusalem because that's where the temple was at. You follow? So every year you were supposed to bring a, 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 a tithe to that place. And when you get there, you eat. Read. The tithe of thy corn. The tithe of what? The tithe of thy corn. The tithe of thy corn. So far, we don't read money yet. We? Of thy wine. Of thy wine. You're supposed to tithe your corn, your wine. What else? And of thine oil. Of thine oil. Read. That and good olive oil, cold pressed, extra virgin, good oil. Not that garbage. What are you talking to? What are you talking to? To the Israelites. That's right. right. To the church? He's talking to the Israelites, which is, we are the church. I'm just checking. Read. Oh, you can check all you want. We got you. Read. And the firstlings. <laughs> and the firstling. Of which is firstling is what? Of what? Of thy herds. Of thy herd. Remember, you're supposed to bring the first male without blemish as a tithe. Read. And of thy flocks. Says, one thing at a time. Don't be so quick to run to Paul. Let's finish this first. Don't, don't confuse her. Listen, and when I finish breaking it down, then you can bring any question you want. But if you're talking while I'm doing it, then you bring in confusion. That's not of God. The scripture said God is not the author of confusion. So let me finish the point, and if you have a question, you can bring the question. You follow? Read. That thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God. So the time was established so you may learn to fear God. When he's tell you do something, do it. Read. Always. Always. Verse 24. Let's get to the juicy part now. Read. And if the way be too long for thee. So if Jerusalem was too far, because we were scattered in the four corners of the world. So if you had, like the Ethiopian eunuch who came to worship, you're living in Ethiopia, but you are Jew. And Deuteronomy 16, 16 tells you, three times a year, all male must present themselves before the Lord. So those three times, they have to come, but you all the way in Ethiopia. And let's say you have a family of 12. How much food and, and beast you have to carry with you to come and sacrifice to the Lord? A lot. So the way is mad for, and you got a lot of things to carry. And those are treacherous road. From Africa all the way to Northeast Africa, which is where Israel is, there's no such thing as a Middle East. That thing was invented. You follow? Israel is in Northeast Africa. That's it's actually, one right. piece of land. Read. So that thou art not able to carry it. You see that? You're not able to carry all this stuff to, to Jerusalem. Read. Or if the place be too far from thee, uh -huh. which the Lord thy God shall choose to set his name there. Read. When the Lord thy God hath blessed thee. Verse 25. Then shalt thou turn it into money. Pastor's happy now. Money, 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 money. You see, so if you cannot carry all the stuff, let's say you did, you, you did a lot of sins, you need all them doves, them cows, them whatever. It says, you know what you gotta do? Sell it. Sell it and take the money. Let's see what you're gonna do with the money. Do you give it to Pastor Pork Chop or do you do something else with it? Read. And bind up the money. Because it's, easy, it's easier to travel with a grain on you than to travel with five bulls. Read. And bind up the money in uh -huh. thine hand and shalt go unto the place which the Lord so thy God take the money and go to Jerusalem. Read. Shall choose and thou shalt bestow that money. When you get there, you're going to use that money. Let's see if it says give it to the pastor. Read. For whatsoever thy soul lusteth after. Read. For oxen. So you, you, 
you're you gonna take that same money you already sold your 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 ox, your, your whatever you sold. You when you get to Jerusalem, you take that same money and you do what with it? You buy what? For oxen. You buy oxen. Or for sheep. You're gonna buy sheep. Or for wine. You're gonna buy wine. Or for strong drink. You're gonna buy hard liquor. Or oh yeah, some churches tell you. You can't drink liquor. That's not in the Bible. The Bible said don't drink to get drunk. Read. Christ's first miracle was what? Water into wine. Paul says, don't drink just water. Drink a little liquor for thy stomach's sake. Read. Or for whatsoever thy soul desireth. So you're going to buy those things back. You don't give the money. You buy them back. Read. And thou shalt eat there before the Lord thy God. And you're going to do what? And thou shalt eat there. You're going to eat because the sacrifice, the, when you go to sacrifice, is also a feast. So as you're eating, 10% of that sacrifice, the Levi will come with a three-prone hook. And while the meat is, is, is boiling, they just pass the hook. Whatever meat is in that hook, they take it with them. Whatever's saying that part, you eat with your family. So the law of tithing was never money. So now this is where it even get more interesting. Give me Hebrew 10 and 4. According to what we read was the law of what? Of sacrifice. Are you with me? Tithing is the law of sacrifice. Hebrew 10 and 4. The book of Hebrew. Let's see if your pastor is a damn liar. He's just collecting money off of your back. Read. Verse 4. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats shall take away sin. So but in the New Testament, in the book of Hebrew, who wrote Hebrew? Paul. Paul. Let's see what Mosiah told Paul to write. Because a lot of times people keep naming Paul like Paul has his own different agenda from the Most High God. God direct Paul to write. So it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins. Because with all the sacrifices, was there any sacrifice to save you? During the Old Testament? Continue, brother. I'm listening. No, so yes, I'm just asking yes or no question. What what if you were a witch in the Old Testament, was there any sacrifice that could have saved you? No, your blood was the sacrifice. You would have been put to death. So the blood of bull could not save you from your sin. It was needful that Christ came and died. Read. Verse 5. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world. Who's he? When Christ came into the world. Read. He said. He said what? Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not. So the hell with sacrifice. I don't want no more sacrifice. Which means I don't want your time. Bring it out. Which is part of the law of sacrifice. So what the pastor talking about bring the tithing to the church. Your pastor is lying to you. The Bible says no more sacrifice and tithing was a law of sacrifice. Read. But a body has thou prepared me. Christ became the living sacrifice to replace the sacrificial law. So anything that falls under the sacrificial law is done away with. So, they will use that same verse to go back to the original point that all the laws are done away with. So in two ways they shoot themselves in the foot. If all the laws are done away with, no more tithing. According to the scripture, only the law of sacrifice is done away with. So, no more tithing. Free will offering, you can bring in. But not 10%. Your pastor is not a Levitical priesthood. The priesthood does not exist anymore. There is no temple to sacrifice. The Bible said, if a man does not work, he does not eat. Right. Your pastor needs to get a job. Right. We all got jobs. That's right. We all got jobs. We don't live, live off the church. Like we read for you in the book of Acts, if you fall on hard time, it is our duty to take care of you. But as a man, you're supposed to get back on your feet because the scripture also says it's better to die than to live like a beggar. So tell your pastor, stop begging. Right. Get a job. Be a man. Bring it out. 
Does that say, well, you know, I need to take care of the people. Um, I need to be available to them 24-7. Guess what? We're doing the same work. We work a regular job, and we're still there for the people 24-7. That's right. So why can't we do it and you can't? Because you're a thief. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.